On a second run where we're formatting the profile app, we don't want anything to show that is currently blocked. So if the app isn't blocked or uh, is not contained in the blocked app list, then it should be added to the list. Because that way on a second run where there's things that may be already blocked, it should be here. Yeah, that makes sense. In fact, this actually doesn't really do anything because the only time we use format to profile app is, yeah, this one. Wait, let me see, what is this for? Get foregrounded app. I mean, it doesn't matter because in all instances where you use format app, we're, we're looking up we're, we're looking up what, what ends up being invoked or what, what gets pulled from the native app. So this doesn't even make any sense. It should just be this. It should be, if it's not contained, then we should, we should, uh, we should add it. And actually this makes me want to make it a hash set because that time complexity has got to be insane. But I guess people won't be adding too much, so it's not a big problem. All right, so the whole reason why we were doing this was because one, we can get this out of here. And two, we were getting the foregrounded app. Oh, I think we were just getting the foregrounded app and then we did an updated list to string. Yeah, and then we didn't, um, and then we ended up getting some weird information when we were digging for stuff and that's why we ended up doing this. Okay, now that we have usage time working correctly, we should, we should use that handy method that we just made. We'll call this, usage time current list and we'll pass through our app list this is equal to this and then we're going to make all right we're going to get an updated list this is going to be a list of profile apps okay and then all we have to do use the hash set to find to iterate or uh iterate through app list by using the package name and checking if it's in the hash set, which it should. And then after finding a match, compare the app list um, dot package dot usage stats to the to the updated lists dot list dot package dot usage stats and keep count of every time there's a difference. No, we don't want to keep count because we have to keep track. We have to keep track of one, right? So, um, okay, keep count of every time there's a difference and what are we turning our profile and save the profile app. Found profile app is not equal to null and we reach this logic again, return an empty profile app. This pretty much is the logic that we need to make sure that, we, that we're currently on an app. And it doesn't matter what the usage stat is if it's if we're if we're looking at the past five days or the past 24 hours because the point is that the usage stat or the the time in the foreground will change no matter what the range of time is if that makes sense all right and we also want this to be um oh profile foregrounded app is already there so uh if if it contains it okay so First it checks it and then we go in here and then we say, I mean, we can combine this into one if statement, but I don't know. Uh, I, I kind of want to make it a variable because it's going to be kind of long, a little long. So it's going to be bool usage time change. And this is equal to if app dot daily usage time is not equal to updated list. See, the thing is we can't use format to profile app here because an app can be banned. So is this even correct to have this here? We should rely on the main models blocked app list for any time that we want to omit a profile app which is what we already do, right? And in that way we can use format to profile app and we can make a list. Maybe I should be making a, a hash map. I'll probably make a hash map. That's probably better. All right, so let's see. 
We iterate through Appless, check if it's in the hash map, doesn't really matter. And then after finding a match, compare the usage stats. So if usage time, updated usage time is not empty and usage time changed, we can definitely pack this all into one uh, if statement, by the way. Uh, but if usage time changed, then we want foregrounded app to equal, okay, there's no null here. I guess we can search for, for just a, a, an empty string or something. Is empty, then do this, else we return. In the worst case scenario, we return an empty anyway. So this is all good. Now, the only thing that's left is this looks a little bit drawn out. So like we have three if statements here. So we definitely want to, we definitely want to narrow this down because it looks a little ugly. We can probably combine this too, right? I mean, it's already kind of long. What we should do instead is we shouldn't return the app. And then what we can do is we can save the foregrounded app to the updated app. When we return the profile app, we'll have an updated app. And then we can update our logic. We can update like our app list eventually. So after the foregrounded app is returned we can update block apps page model dot app list to update a specific entry now that we have this we want to return this over here so what we want to do is we want to say profile app foreground okay why isn't this working uh there you go. Just have to auto complete it. Um, and then we can say locked apps page model. Why do we even have this in here? Oh, because we need to compare it to our current app list, right? And then we can print out foregrounded app. So we're going to run this program. We're going to see if it works pretty much the way it should work is it should print a profile app if we have stayed on an app one time after backgrounding. So we're going to see if that works. All right, we're going to we're going to test this out. We're going to see if this works. Let's go into the camera app. So now this should run. It should just freak out a little bit. It'll say received. It'll be blank because the profile app could be blank. And then if we stay for five seconds, it'll call it again. Okay, uh, we're gonna do this again. Go into the camera app. We're gonna see if we crash. It doesn't seem like we're getting an app. It's because we didn't finish the logic app. And equal you think i can do this if it's just equal to each other you think they'll match the strings okay and then if app is equal to this we say app is equal to foregrounded app something like that if we end up getting to here we should do something along the lines of for profile app and app list so it should look like app is equal to updated list it's a string app dot package name this will update everything and then it'll return a profile app all right so we're going to try again we're going to see if this works okay it's definitely going through a lot let's see received apps youtube see even in a time like this it should be staying on this and the app should be constantly finding a new usage time all right let's see what the print statement looks like Current time equals zero. All right, so it's equal to 729512. So the app list is doing something. Let's see what the problem here is. We're iterating through. Updated list has no value, it looks like. No, it does have a value. It does have an, a value because it's populating, but the current time is zero, but our app is telling us that we that we are getting something. Also, it's very weird that we're on camera, but camera is not updating. It's like it's not, it's like it's frozen. I wonder why this is happening. Because this is, this get foreground app is happening every time we receive a port, but it's not updating. Let's see if this works. All right, we're back to zero. We're also back to the number being the same. What if I re-enter the app? and then I call everything again. I terminate it and call everything again. It updates every time that we exit the app. Oh, that's so weird. It's almost like the app is frozen in time. This is happening when, when the thread executes, it executes at a certain time. 
and the system time at that execute is going to be the same. All right, let's see if this updates at all. And if this updates, then at least it's not a complete lost cause. All right, that's updating, right? It is updating. Okay, so it's updating, which means we have system clock updating. We did a lot of great work today. I'm very happy about it. Um, we made some progress when it came to background threading and we're almost done. We just need to make sure that the usage data is updating every time that this function runs. We've already proven that we can have it run because as you can see, it goes to like the number is changing every time we update it. So we just have to reflect that when we are looking for our total, uh, total foreground time for each app. But thank you guys for joining. I appreciate it. If you guys, if you guys like the stream, then make sure to subscribe. But thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.